Now, to get an estimate of the base set superposition error, we need four additional calculations. And these are the following. To see what the difference be between uh, the case where A is using the functions on B and the case where it's not using the functions on B, we have to do the following calculations. First we take molecule A or fragment A, whatever you like to call it, and we use the original basis set that was on it. And we do this calculation at the geometry of the complex, which is here. And that's why I show it as a distorted circle. And I denote this energy as this here. We do the same thing for B, this time with with the corresponding basis set on B. And next, what we do is, we take the complex, and we have only molecule A with its basis set, and the basis set of molecule B. Not that the molecule itself is not there, that's why I show it as kind of... Um, pale uh, molecule here, only the orbitals of B are there. And we call these ghost orbitals, because there is no molecule. Then we do the same thing for B. We include molecule B and the combined basis set AB. That is, we include the basis set of A, but we do not, we do not include molecule A itself. Now you can see where this is going. If we take the difference between the sum of the energies here and the sum of the energies here, we should get an estimate of how important it is to have the basis set of the other molecule here when we calculate the energy of A. Okay, so here's what I just said. This is the formula and I denote it as delta E CP. Here CP stands for counterpoise correction. So this tells us, again, how, how big of an error we get if we, if we used our simplest approach to calculate a binding energy. And if we subtract this correction from that delta E that we, we normally would get from our simplest approach, we, we get a much better estimate of our binding energy. You should note, however, that this is an approximation. And there are some objections to such an approach. And one of these objections is that one should not use all the ghost orbitals here. However, um, Test cases have shown that it is uh, that one gets a better result if we do include all the ghost orbitals on B. Okay. Um, another thing that we note is that counterpoise correction is larger for electron correlation methods and is more sensitive to basis set. And I'm going to illustrate these in an example. Uh, another thing in, uh, to keep in mind is that BSSE is always present. And, uh, and you can even see it in single molecules, which we also call intramolecular uh, basis set superposition error. An example of that would be two conformers, where um, you can think of a case, let's say some linear uh, molecule, uh, and then another confirmation of the same molecule, which is, let's say, more or less um, more compact, I should say. Uh, you can see that in the compact case, uh, more atoms will be able to benefit from the basis set on the other atoms. And if you don't l use a basis set that's large enough, you, can, you, you will not treat the two conformers on equal footing. So uh, that's kind of a, an example of an intramolecular BSSE. 
Here's an example uh, which I got from the Journal of Physical Chemistry. Uh, it's an article about the hydrogen bond energy of the water dimer. Let us look at what happens to the binding energies with the basis set. Okay, so to be consistent, let's look at the MP2 frozen core with the CCPVDZ basis set and CCPVTZ basis set. You can see that as you go in this direction that is increasing the size of the basis set um, you are um, getting different results for delta E and this should converge at, at some point but let's look at what happens to the um, counterpoise correction you can now see that it grows with the basis set and that's why I said that uh, the counterpoise correction is um, basis set dependent and it should be larger for correlated methods and this is this becomes obvious if you also look at the SCF values it's from hard fault calculation you can see that here we have only 3.57 uh, correction, this is in kcal per mole while this is much larger with MP2 which is a correlated method 